Speaking about origin, uh, one of the things that you did in this book, and I love that, is that you go into the early history of premillennialism, you know, in terms of what the early church fathers believed. So can you, you know, explain that? Because I think I think that's so important to see because you have this apostolic succession being taught. Like, you know, you have disciples of John yes. being taught premillennialism. And I and I think that, you know, that's a killer argument and you know you know it has to be dealt with because you know i know the you know the exact uh you know people will say oh that's tradition well if if you have them saying hey john taught me this yes john who wrote the revelation yeah. i think you have to pay attention to what's going on here so can you just like go over that early faith of, of the premillennialism in the church fathers sure um if we Let's let's discuss the anti-Nicene age. And for uh, your listeners, that refers to the time before the Nicene Creed, but after the canon was finished. So we would say 96 AD to 325. Mm -hmm. During this time, you see very prominent, prominent premillennial belief. Uh, they refer to it as uh, Kiliism, meaning thousandism, but it was the same idea that they anticipated that so many of the prophecies about the kingdom would happen after Jesus returned and then, but they would be fulfilled before new heavens and new earth. So premillennialism as we would describe it today, as far as apostles of John, that's probably the most notable in that Papias was a very strong premillennialist and he was a direct student of the apostle John and Polycarp was a premillennialist as well. And that really makes, is it true that, their words are not scripture. Yes, that is true. But you have to, they're about as close as you can get because their teacher wrote Revelation. Yeah. And it's, if they both got it wrong, they're very bad students. And how could they get this wrong? They knew him personally, what he meant by this. And so Papias, he was such a strong premillennialist that later uh, church father Eusebius he was an amillennialist, and Eusebius, this is centuries later, mocked Papias because he was a premillennialist. So it's, there's no denial. Well, it's hard to say what, it, what he really meant. Well, later amillennialists would, were trying to undermine him already. And of course, Polycarp, very, of course, one of the most famous church fathers we have, he may have been referenced as the uh, angel or pastor of Smyrna. So he might even be mentioned in Revelation. That's how famous he is. But yes, a uh, student of John the Apostle. And of course, we have a very famous church father, Irenaeus, who was a student of Polycarp. And he's very, he's a very sincere premillennialist as well. This is not to mention people like Justin Martyr, Lactantius. So big names that taught premillennialism. Whereas I'm not even aware in the first or second century of any church writing at all that flat out extols all millennialism. Now, I'm sure there was non premillennialism. I'm just not aware of any writings on that matter in those first two centuries. And I think that's very notable. Yeah, you mentioned that in, in the book where there's, there's no document to your knowledge. And I don't know if it's to anybody's knowledge of anything different other than premillennialism. Yes, there were non premillennialists. But yes. there weren't any documents saying it. The closest thing we have is Justin Martyr's own words criticizing people who weren't premillennialists. So the <laughs> only proof we have is someone criticizing that belief. Yeah, but and and again, you know, um, I think it's really cool to see it because you know, as you mentioned, you know, you, you know, as I said too, is John the apostle who wrote Revelation. He had two two disciples saying, "Hey, this is what he taught us." So you know, it's like, okay, what do we do with those statements? Either were they lying, or were they telling the truth? Right. Both are problematic, I think, and there's no, you know, you know, like there's no good answer, you know, like I, um, I don't know if anybody who would say they're lying. Well, then you have to have the evidence to show that they're lying, which we, we, you know, we don't even have. Right, and these are some of the most respected Christians of all time, seen as very humble men. I mean, Justin Martyr got his name because of how he was, how he died. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't think this is a very dishonorable person. He could be a, he could be a little, um over the top in his writing sometimes, but who can't be? So, right. <laughs> did, did they even believe too, um, just to clarify, that they even believed that the Antichrist was future and that, you know, um, I think it was Apollotus as well as Irenaeus, they, they believe that Daniel's 70th week was future, so seven-year yeah. final tribulation. So this is, you know, this isn't even like, you know, dispensationalism. So even if we're not a dispensationalist, like this is just still 
early Christian belief that there was a future coming Antichrist and a future seven year tribulation. Oh, oh yeah. In fact, it might even be the case that Irenaeus, well, I shouldn't say this, but he talked about he talks about the Antichrist extensively and against Heresies Book Five, if your audience wants to look that up. But he really goes into it quite a bit. But yeah, it was a very common belief the Antichrist was still coming. In fact, Irenaeus briefly discusses how why it wasn't Nero and how people made that error, which I have to laugh when I hear, you know, some preterists today speculate on on Nero. Really? That's yeah, that's amazing. Um, I didn't know that he even went up against that that uh, Nero belief, you know, which is preterism, essentially. Right. He well, he was. He thinks and I'm not saying this is true, but Irenaeus at least thinks it's possible. The mark of the beast through Gematria, uh, the alphanumeric code of using numbers and letters. He thought that maybe that meant that the Antichrist name would correspond to 666. So he tried to mathematically figure it out with Nero and he goes, no, not him. Plus, that wouldn't make sense anyway. He didn't do the things the Antichrist is supposed to do. And it's sort of an offhand comment. So I don't think he was really responding to a widespread belief, but it's almost like he's just checking names off the list.